podcast and we are excited here. I know we're having some good laughs here before this. So we're going to have a good fun time here together with Marco and Jennifer. Um, 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 Amodia. Amodia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's messing up your name already. I should just say how much fun we're having. <laughs> That's part of the fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, giving spirits. Well, we're so glad to have you. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you. And we want to, of course, welcome our viewers. Thank you for joining us again. And as you know, this is airing tonight at 730, but you can, of course, watch it anytime. And please share with your family and friends. So today we are going to be looking at 1 Corinthians. And the um, theme here is building healthy community. So Dexter, can you tell us a little bit about this? One of the struggles Paul had with the Corinthians is they were so splintered. They were very fragmented. I mean, they, I mean, they, they broke up because there was immorality. And then some people were saying Paul was a better teacher. So I'm a follower of Paul. No, no, I like, I like um, um, Cephas more. Another one, I like Apollos. And Paul had to set them straight. He's like, look, being fragmented and splintered like that, having all these cliques, you will never, never grow um, spiritually or you'll never mature as a Christian when you're like that. Um, and we've had that problem at Plantation. It's a, such a big church, and a lot of people are just lonely. They haven't experienced Christian fellowship. And I was looking around, who are some of the most hospital, hospitable people at the church who can really speak genuinely, authentically to the theme of building community? And when I thought about the people who's, who's been the most hospitable to myself and Elizabeth, Jennifer and Marco, I, I couldn't think about, I mean, they have been fascinatingly very welcoming. Um, we have visited each other's house. I've invited myself to their house. <laughs> and, um, and we show up at other people's homes and we see them there too. Well, like, oh, you guys are here too? You all know everybody. So I, I really wanted to hear from them directly. Um, you know, how do we go about building community and, and, and fellowshipping? You guys seem to have the secret sauce. What do you do to make you stand out? And how could you help others to do what you're doing? Okay, good. Well, we're looking forward to talking about this. So before we begin, let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, again, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you to um, read your word and to discuss um, practical tips that you have given us as Christians as to how we can grow and um, be healthy Christians. And we thank you that you've created us as social beings. And as we discuss that now, um, may you just um, anoint our lips and may your Holy Spirit give us guidance and understanding. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so let's begin here. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 2. I am writing to God's church in Corinth. To you who have been called by God to be his own holy people, he made you holy by means of Christ Jesus, just as he did for all people everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. So our tip from this is we cannot focus on Christ together if we haven't first focused on Christ alone. And our question is, in what ways does our personal connecting with Christ enable us to connect deeper with one another? One of the things I like about Jennifer and Marco, the last time you all did the session, of course, it has blown up. You all need to go back and look at episode seven, the book of Ruth, um, to see how inspiring these folks were. Um, but I like that you do your research. No pressure, but I'm hoping you did your research tonight also. <laughs> no pressure. Though they travel a lot. Jennifer just came back from London. I should have tell you, bring me some of those Tesco teas. Oh, um, boy. <laughs> and, um, but but <laughs> take, a, take a shot at this, guys. I mean, what's your thoughts on this? Because Paul, Paul was looking at several different angles to show us why unity is more sensible than disunity and lack of harmony. Um, uh, so talk, talk to this question if you had an answer for this. Uh, if not, that's fine. 
can you repeat the question again? I don't want to speak out of turn. Right. So, 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 so the question is, the, the, the whole idea is you can focus on Christ together if you haven't focused on Christ alone. That, that's the tip. And, and so we're asking in what ways does our personal connecting with Christ enable us to connect with one another? If I could take a stab while you're processing your answer, mm -hmm. you know, Christ, our love for Christ ought to be a common thread that binds us. If, if you love what I love, it's easier to have deep fellowship. Men do it all the time, Marco. If the Miami Heat is your team, oh, no, no. Your team, Marco, is going to be the Atlanta Hawk because you have that Italian forward <laughs> playing on it. Um, <laughs> not Marco Bellinelli. What's his name, boy? Um, um, anyhow, you have that forward from Italy playing on that. So, so <laughs> if, if, we, if we share a love for our same team, we automatically would bond on that. And that's something temporary. How greater if we both have a love for Christ, we both share the same values of mm -hmm. um, our Christian journey, wouldn't our bonding even be deeper? Yes. That's kind of where the question is going. Exactly. You know, it, it taken, um, having heard the question, it makes me think about, you know, self-love also. I, I know that's not the question, but, you know, if we don't love ourselves, it's, it's kind of hard to love others, you know? So if we don't have a relationship with Christ, how are we going to have relationships with others? You know, first we have to have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with him, understand what it means, his love towards us. So we in turn can love others unselfishly. I don't know if that makes any sense to you. That's good. That's good. That's good. You, you did not get that wisdom from your London trip. You got that from the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. No, no, no. Let me, let me, so here's here. Let me flip the question then. And this is being a little judgmental and you all probably would have to straighten me out here. So it is, is our lack of wanting to genuinely connect with each other evidence that we haven't connected with Christ or are there other reasons why as a church, we don't really connect. We don't fellowship. We don't have life groups with, with others that we do life together with you know that's a that's a good question uh, i have some thought on that i have some thought on that uh i i was reading um Corinthian one and 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 i was thinking the connection with my brothers and sister how sometimes difficult it can be uh and, and then i was thinking the connection with god so Connection with God to me is sometimes much easier than connection with people. Um, in the way that uh, we as people look at each other with a lot of uh, differences and a lot of uh, um, expectations and a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of things in our head that they're not there maybe. So this already it's a, a big great negative uh, things to connect to each other. Just the thought of somebody. Now I connect with God, I pray to God, and I have a sense of uh, happiness, a sense of uh, being guided by him, and, uh, and, 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 and I feel great. And sometimes connecting with people is not as uh, great as connecting with God. So probably if we remove this uh, thought in our head, which is difficult, but we're gonna have to try to be simple and ourselves and just uh, open uh yeah that would be much easier so that was my primary thought when i thought about this uh, chapter and and the verses on the chapter so, so then marco it, do you think then that our connection with god in it, does that make it easier to connect with others or it has nothing to do with connecting with others. I think that's kind of what I'm trying to flesh out. Right. Uh, I, oh, sorry. That's no, 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 question. I think it does matter, of course. It, it makes it big differences. If we connect with God, we are connected with God. And that simplicity is how we connect with God. We should connect to people. Mm -hmm. But I myself find out that it is not like this because I don't need to think too much before I open my mind and kneel down and and pray to God 
and say to him everything I have to say, where if I had to say something to somebody, um, it takes me a long time and I'm gonna have to find a way to say it. And maybe then if I think twice, I'm not gonna say it. Right, right. Sister J? Yeah, and I was saying, you know, like what Marco was saying, we have to, our connection to God, to Christ is so simple. It's like a child, complete trust when we do believe in him, because not everyone does, but we, we give of ourselves. And that connection to people, I think we need to, oh boy, this is such a hard thing. Yeah. I think yeah. what it is, is that we don't take away all those pretentious, thoughts and feelings and so on and so forth, which is why it's so hard to connect with people. Right. And we may think that we have a connection with God, but if we follow Jesus's life on earth, we'll realize we, we'll realize we really don't because it was so simple. You know, for him, it was so simple. And in fact, it was really easy for him to connect to people because his life was so simple and his relationship with his dad was so simple you know it's like you you guys have a child it's not like she's she holds back to talk to mommy and daddy she's hurt she's like mommy daddy I'm hurt or whatever you know and it's okay for us with our relationships earthly relationships Relationships. It's not that easy. And, and I'm speaking about in the church. <clears throat> it's not that easy because some of us, we get hurt. But you see, that's the thing. We're not being simple. We're not taking. It's OK that we were hurt, but we are brothers and sisters in Christ. We have a great connection with God himself. So therefore, we need to take away all the complications and just make it simple. Right. I don't know if that makes any right. sense. No, you're, 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 you're doing something. You're doing something. M Marco's answer Marco's answer kind of messed me up, though, because, <laughs> I, I, and, and Marco, you, you guys just are so real. I mean, you all know that already. People say that to you all, all the time. And it's true because you're correct. It's so easier to connect with God. But when it comes to others, like you said, um, Sister Jay, the, the pretentiousness, everybody keeps wearing masks. And, and, but what I think it is, the missing link, I think, is, your connection with God should help people to understand that with you and with God, they could be naked and not ashamed. Mm -hmm. that, that it's okay being vulnerable. I'm not going to judge you because he did not judge me. Yeah. I'm going to create a judgment-free zone because that's what I experienced in his presence. And I don't think we've had that at our church and in so many of the connections. It's so easier just to be superficial. Hi, hello, mm -hmm. happy Sabbath, you know, and, and then that's it. But to, to go beyond that, it means you have to take the risk of them getting to know the real you. And the mm -hmm. fear we have is that if they get to know who we are, they're gonna reject us. Yeah. So it's like, are you going to church more cons in, well, as you're preparing to church, going to church, I mean, are you more, concerned with how am I looking and all this stuff and rather I maybe I'm switching over to something different. no 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 <laughs> no, no. You know, like that you're going there to be like you know I'm going there to to fellowship with other believers and I'm going there to worship God or I know um well I don't know if I should <laughs> I, you know, I, I think for me, um, coming here that, that shifted a little bit. Well, I mean, I probably had a little bit before, but it shifted where it was like, okay, do I look presentable and, you know, getting all caught up <laughs> in the outer appearance when, yeah. you, like, when you said the mask thing, then that's what kind of, um, brought that to mind to me. And so then it is like, you're just going around superficially rather than being, Hey, this is me. <laughs> and, and yeah. I what what makes it worse at our church because before i joined plantation i heard a lot of people saying oh that's the church for highfalutin people that that's mm. the church for for the elite the upper echelon people who are stush and, and and let me tell you what i've discovered highfalutin does not make for good bonding and authentic relationships if if exactly. if your primary objective in life and in church 
is to look good in the eyes of others. Looking good as a high priority is a terrible ingredient for having authentic connection with people. And I think yeah. that's Very. one of the biggest problems we have at Plantation. Yes, that, that is many so of true. Us want to look good. Um, so, so then I'm not going to be comfortable inviting you to my little condo when you have this big fancy house and I feel as if you think you're better than, than me. I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Hence the reason yeah. you not find authentic connection. That, that yeah, I agree. That's true. Perfect. That's true. You know, when I first came here, I, I realized that maybe I, 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 I can't say I was stepping on toes, but it was not the norm just to say, yeah, why don't you come over for lunch? Why? Because it's something that I'd always done. I grew up like that. You know, we in the Caribbean, it's, you know, you go to church, you don't know who you're going to go home with. Anybody's at church. Hey, come, come. And even if you have nothing to eat, there's always, my mom always said, there's always something in the freezer. You can always warm it up, you know? And um, that seemed quite strange to some, um, to many, like, how could you do that? You don't know these people. You don't know how they're going to judge you. But I didn't care, really. I mean, because I don't think those things. I really don't think those things. So it doesn't matter. I mean, my space is my space. It's what I can afford. And whether it's nice to you or not nice to you, that's not, that's not the point. It's about fellowshipping, you know? So it, and if it's just bread and water, that's what we're going to have is bread and water, but we're together and we can, we can fellowship, we can talk, we can pray, we can laugh, we can, you know, whatever it is together. So we don't have to feel so alone all the time. Right? You, you just identified one of the reasons you are so authentic, you and your husband. And, and you, I remember you doing that with us. You're like, look, um, you guys want to come over for Thanksgiving? This is what we have, you know, <laughs> or, or whatever it was. And I, you know, to be honest, I feel more at home with people that will take me when they're not prepared to accept guests than with people who have to be all prepared mm -hmm. because it, it makes me feel well, I could drop in any time. Um, it makes me feel that you, you, you're saying, look, Dex, my space is not perfect, but if you, if you're comfortable with my imperfection, we could bond. Mm -hmm. I just love that. Okay, we're getting yeah. deep here. <laughs> Let's keep moving on and going to our next um, verse. And that is in um, chapter one, verse 10 to 13. I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ to live in harmony with each other, that there be no divisions in the church, rather be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. For some members of of Chloe's household have told me about your quarrels, my dear brothers and sisters. Some of you are saying, I am a follower of Paul. Others are saying, I follow Apollos, or I follow Peter, or I follow only Christ. Has Christ been divided into fractions? Was I, Paul, crucified for you? Were any of you baptized in the name of Paul? Of course not. So our tip here is becoming like-minded. And our question is, is striving for no division in your community healthy or a form of wishful thinking? Yeah, is, is that, yeah. he's like no division among you. Is that, is he being serious? I mean, is that possible? Yeah, like with sin, is that really Yeah, it, it almost didn't make sense. I'm like, Paul, get real. Right. No division, yeah, but you, you want us to be what, minded? But what are we striving for? What is what what are we striving for? So we are here on earth. What is it that we are supposed to be striving for? Because my mother used to always say, if you don't know where you're coming from, you won't know where you're going. So where is it that we are going? If we know where we're going, then what Paul said or he's advising us to do makes all the sense in the world because i want to see how when we get to heaven how we're going to divide ourselves up you, you know that there's a if thing that's like, what we're aiming for there's a thing i like to tell people um especially when i you know like like we are we are a mixed couple right that's what they call us mm -hmm. right and i said you know if you have a problem with 
fellowshipping with certain people mm -hmm. because of their color, creed, or class, mm -hmm. you will not have a problem with heaven because you won't even be there. Exactly. <laughs> you won't even be there. Heaven will not be an issue for you, you know? Because exactly. every, every creed and race will find an equal place. You, you answered my question. And I think the, the, the answer I, I gained from what you just shared is the question is not really, could we really accomplish no division? That's not the question. Mm -hmm. it, the issue is what transformation takes place in our lives when we strive for no division and when we strive to be like-minded mm -hmm. because a, a lot of good happens when we are seeking to be on the same page, whether we ever get there or not is almost besides the point. Exactly. Great. Exactly. Okay, let's keep going on here now to um, verse 26 to 31 of chapter one. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. Instead, God chose these chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. As a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. God has united you with Christ Jesus. For our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. He made us pure and holy, and he freed us from sin. Therefore, as the scriptures say, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. Amen. And our tip is con Amen. connecting and communing with only the high and mighty. Is that correct? I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And our question is, how do we allow status and affluence to not impact our community building negatively yeah yeah that's a good question so i was joking with um with jennifer and marco before and i said i don't know how you guys do it how come you're so warm and biting um you know uh, did, did 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 marco sell that yacht and make that make that <laughs> make that three million dollar commission <laughs> hey marco it's really good if you could sell one of those russian periaks right now that's oh my no, I, I will not sell it to a rush <laughs> right now. <laughs> Honestly, I've got my idea on that. <laughs> so no, but but how do you really so if, if I have a nice house and I like fancy things, how do I invite people into my space without them feeling intimidated? Or without them thinking, well, I guess I can't invite, I can't invite her to my one bedroom apartment because look where they live. But if 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 you are, in other words, you walk up into my space and it's really nice, it's pretty expensive European leather furniture. <laughs> um, but but if you if you're thinking that I'm looking down on you, that's not really my problem. You are judging how you think I will think towards you right. because of my nice things. So, so that's my question. My, the question is really, how do you not allow affluence? So I, I have letters behind my name, Dr. Dex, um, masters, excellent. How do you not let that, your money or your, you know, whatever prestige you have, Status, how do you yeah. not let that affect your ability to connect and, com and and build community with, with everybody. Yeah, I think in, in being simple, in being yourself, and and also not to think that um, if I'm inviting you in my castle, a golden castle, uh, you're gonna have something to say about me or, or I'm, I'm gonna have to be afraid of showing you my castle. So this is also a thought that uh, is already negative to invite somebody in your house. Oh, you know, I'm too much for these guys. Oh, I'm too little for these guys. These thoughts in our heads are the one that are blocking this connection and blocking this, uh, you know, relationship, fellowship. Uh, unfortunately, as human beings, I think uh, we all have it. Um, and again, we, with Christ, it is possible to, to return to the norm, which is, you know, helping your brother, 
Jesus didn't go to 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 help people what they were doing. Of course, you know, like like the Samaritan and and everybody else that Jesus met. Yeah, but we are human beings. We have our own. Uh, I wouldn't say just sins. We have our thought and, and, and thinking. Again, we are thinking too much. How do, you thinking push, how do you push past those insecurities, though? How do you push past those judgmental thoughts? By being one in Christ, you know, again, it comes down to simplicity. You know, are we aiming to be like Christ? We are not him. We are sinners. We're all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Um, but we should aim to be more like him. And I think once we realize that we are aiming to be more like him, because one day we want to live with him, you know, forever, those things will disappear. It's like you, you said, you know, it doesn't matter if it happens. It's that we are striving for that. Okay. It does matter if it happens, but I mean, we know we are not perfect already, but we are trying to be more like Christ. So we need to emulate his life. We need to take example from his, the way he lived, the, 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 the teachings that he's given to us. And um, yeah, it's just really simplicity, man. We, we have to get back to a simpler, simpler thought process and simpler way of living. And it doesn't mean that we need to be the tail. So it's not that because I want to go back to a simpler way of living, I don't have to live in the golden castle, like Marco says. I can live in the golden castle, but my golden castle is for a reason and a purpose so that maybe there are other people who would love to fellowship, but because they don't have a bigger space, they're not able to invite as many people, maybe, possibly. Now, hey, Jennifer, you know, your golden castle. Yeah, sure, let's do this. And, you know, with we're all there for here for purpose for a reason and we need to just stop thinking you know these material things they are passive so so i i think what i hear you saying is that people need to experience that we have golden hearts even though we have a golden castle exactly mm -hmm. most definitely got it Good. okay it's a nice way to put it yes i like that <laughs> yeah yep yep <laughs> go on to chapter two and verse three and four. I came to you in weakness, timid and trembling, and my message and my preaching were very plain. Rather than using clever and persuasive speeches, I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. And our tip here is sensibly vulnerable. And our question would be, what would be your guide for knowing the right place, people and time to be vulnerable? Good question. Good question. Help me out, guys, because you are vulnerable, being vulnerable, being, you know, being authentic is all good. But there are some people you can't share every and anything with. There are some people who might not be mature enough to handle it. There are some people who would go gossip. So how do you mm -hmm. know who to be vulnerable with? How do you know? Because vulnerability is how we connect. You know, we, we don't connect by being um, by being superficial or by 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 putting up our guards. You are you connect when you let your guards down. You know, I, I you know, like for me personally with you guys, when when I sat with you and I hear your ups and downs, your struggles, you know, to get this job and to, you have to travel here. I'm like, wow, these they have my struggles, too. So we, I immediately felt a connection with you. Um, but but you, do you share that with everybody? How do you know who to be vulnerable with? How do you, that's the question. Well, I'm gonna answer quickly on my side. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have that uh, magic stick. I'm myself and, uh, and, uh, and, and I, I'm gonna be as I'm gonna be, where is um, the king of king or, um, the homeless uh, outside my but how, but how do you know I, who you can speak with about about, about, about myself about myself and no, about vulnerable Jesus. things um i'm gonna have to use my common sense <laughs> <laughs> no what is that though what is that common sense is not always common 
But you no, know, it's not. <laughs> no, I know, but uh, probably we just a couple of words and a couple of questions and see how we react and the answer. I'm gonna move my way into wherever you know it is the case. But but do you have practical steps for somebody listening to tell them? Okay, this is what you look for. This is the setting to know how vulnerable you could be. I don't have um, a book for that, really. <laughs> so. Got you, got you. J Jennifer, Liz, you all want to rescue, rescue the perishing? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, leave, I'll let Liz start first. Oh, boy. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's why she's your friend, Liz. She's, only your friends get to corner you. <laughs> I guess it, maybe it's piggybacking on Merkel. You kind of feel it out a bit as, and I don't know if you're, you know, like if you're talking and the person looks like they're genuinely listening mm -hmm. or are they just kind of like eyes are drifting and, uh, and they're responding like they didn't really hear what you said. Well, I'm not going to tell them. <laughs> just that. shut up as soon as possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I guess it's just looking at that body language and, that part of that and just hearing how it goes um i don't know and, and sometimes it is being like maybe you are the one who has to take that first step and be the one who's vulnerable because right. maybe the other person isn't so right right um, yeah i don't know <laughs> right right <laughs> you, you know um i i remembered hearing that on colin and dawn's program one time one young man was saying the happy Sabbath syndrome or something like that, where, you know, you go to church and Sabbath, how are you? Good, happy Sabbath. And that's it. Nobody really wants to know if you're okay. I remember one Sabbath, someone asked me, said, how are you? I said, do you really truly want to know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and they didn't, they were very honest. Not really. Oh. That was said to me. No, not really. I'm like, oh. okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. And I think from there, I started, well, not that it hadn't been part of me, but I think it became something that I felt I needed to do was when I'd ask someone, especially on Sabbath, how are you doing? They're fine. And I, I kind of have a feeling. And I say, are you really fine? Are you okay? Now tell me the truth. And I remember one young lady's like, what is up with you? How did you know something was wrong? Because I don't know, for the same reason you are vulnerable with people, it's a maturity thing. I think it, I, I don't I know if it. it comes with age or, or whatever. It's just a maturity thing. I don't know. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, I think we should end on that good note, man. This is, yes. oh, <laughs> you guys just give some good stuff. That's all I could say. But I am, um, Again, guys, I am so grateful for your personhoods, for your presence. And, and I mean, I, Jen, I told Jennifer before the program, I'm like, you're my hero. And she's like, wait, 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 why are you saying that? <laughs> but, but because, I mean, she was jet lagged and still giving me the thumbs up saying, yes, we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, didn't even know Marco's schedule, if he had sold that yacht or not. She didn't know his schedule. <laughs> But said, hey, we're going to make it work. So I, I really want to say thanks to you guys. And Marco, that Italian player that plays for the Atlanta Hawk is Deli um, Danilo Gallinari. I know <laughs> okay. you, don't look at, you don't look at basketball. You don't look at basketball. You just know AC Milan and so on. No, no basketball for me. Sorry. Shame, shame on you, brother. Shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> just throw in some basketball there dexter i'm trying to bond with him but he's yeah. hard to bond with yeah. <laughs> yeah talk to him about cycling and, yes. and then yeah oh, the to to france. Talk to him about the tour de france yeah. yeah and and everything else around it because <laughs> you only know about that <laughs> Well, thank you again, Mark. Thank you, guys. For this has been a pleasure. And thank you, viewers. We want to remind you again that this airs every Sunday evening at 7.30 on plantationsda.tv. And please share with your family and friends. And Dexter, next episode is episode 23. And, right? Yeah. I have a special <laughs> guest. You know, it's going to deal with healing from people pleasing tendencies. Mm. And we couldn't really find it was difficult to find somebody 
who would be honest and vulnerable, talking about being vulnerable, to say, <laughs> I am a people pleaser and I struggle with it. So we found somebody. Mm. Uh, so you guys are going to be really blessed next episode. Um, so look through 2 Corinthians. Paul is having to defend his reputation. Um, so I want you to read it and ask yourself as you're seeing the way he's defending his reputation, how is this teaching us to be healed from people-pleasing tendencies? Okay, sounds good. Okay, to end, we would just like to have a word of prayer. And I'm going to ask Marco if you wouldn't mind praying for us, please. Sure. Dear Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for uh, being with our brother and sister at this time and to um, um, go through your words. And, uh, uh, and I pray that your words are giving us uh, your Holy Spirit and guidance. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you.